Alright guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, covering part three of the story I was covering earlier, which is titled, Police Officer Exposes the Truth on Domestic Situations and How Men Can Protect Themselves. And no need to do a recap, you guys know where I left off in the last episode two hours ago. So to continue on in his uh, addressing questions and uh, scenarios and sharing war stories here that we can all benefit from, he says, I also want to expand a bit more to the number seven scenario about being specific with your story when speaking to the police. In the, in the part one video, guys, he had eight different scenarios for guys to be aware of and mindful of to help them out. So he's talking about number seven. Uh, the one thing you have you need to have is that you make sure that you have dates and times of any and all events. Official police reports are a matter of public, rec public record, which means it can be used in civil court during divorce proceedings. Criminal matters should not cross over into civil court matters, but it's done a lot. Women do this all the time when it comes to divorce court proceedings. They will use any form of police contact in an attempt to screw over their husband, and now guys can turn the tables. Okay, P pay attention guys that are going through divorces or store this info away in case, uh, well, sadly it happens to you one day. The best thing to do is say something in the likes of, uh, I saw this car I've never seen before on November 21st, 2023. It was parked in my driveway. I went inside at 5.30 p.m. and heard moaning coming from the upstairs. I went to my bedroom and saw my wife sleeping with another man. I took a video and picture for proof. Show the officer, and when he or she sees that it matches with what you're saying, time-stamped, they can put it in the report for accuracy. This can help get around the mutual party consent laws, being that public records are available to everyone. Give a copy of the report to your attorney, and they can int introduce it into uh, court proceedings. If things like this are in the report, it makes the wife's attorney less likely to introduce it. Okay. There's also a chance to get around conditions of the no-fault divorce state using this strategy. This depends on how good your lawyer is. Again, listen to your lawyer. As an added bonus, people tend to believe events that happen when it's written in the public record. It's a form of proof slash evidence in their minds. If court doesn't go the way you want it, distribute that report to friends and family on both sides. Of course, it'll be their choice to believe you or her, but you will be the one who provides some sort of physical evidence versus her word. Controlling the narrative is important. Amen. I say that all the time. When guys don't control the narrative, when they are embarrassed to say what happened, and of course that's understandable, or they're not quick enough to let her say it, and she changes the whole story and paints, paints you as the villain, even though, you know, what she was doing made her the villain. But if you control the narrative, you avoid a lot of shit. Uh, now let's move on to residency. This is a really good one, guys. I mean, th this is all good, but this is one I really like because it involves not just a girlfriend situation taking advantage of, you're about to hear about anybody for that matter. It's a good idea for parties to separate for the night. It restores peace, and there's a very good chance the officers will not have to return to the house during that same day or night. However, it, if officers are telling you to leave, and you, you do not have to leave, and they cannot force you to leave. This is a double-edged sword, being that if you're married or she's on the lease with you, they cannot force her to leave either. Unfortunately for married guys, everything is in, in terms of the house, the cars, and any and all property in the house is considered shared property. Until you're legally divorced, nothing is considered strictly yours and nothing is considered strictly hers, with the exception of the clothes that you own. This, to an extent, goes for guys and gals moving in together on a lease. The only exception to this is when the cops arrive and she's considered a house guest. This means she only comes over occasionally and does not stay for more than a set number of nights. This also depends on things that she has left behind your place. Right here. I'm sure a big chunk of you guys have experienced this when a gal you're seeing, or even your girlfriend, leaves shit behind. And notice as it piles up more and more over time. Now, if you're just dating, but she really likes you, and she knows you're dating other women, but you're open about it and honest, that's marking her territory. There's no accident she's leaving shit behind to mark her territory in case the other girl sees it. Or, you know, if things don't go well, she always has an excuse to come back and talk to you because, oh, she left, you know, this behind or that behind or something like that. But watch how it can burn a guy big time here, according to a cop. Uh, if she has left anything behind and comes over often while staying overnight, this can potentially establish residency. 
In other words, she leaves her crap behind and stays the night for a period of time. And within the state time requirement for residency, she can remain a permanent resident in your place. Now that's a nightmare, huh? This means the legal eviction process needs to take place and the cops cannot remove her. This is a tactic used by squatters. However, it's a bit more devious. In my state, there was a case where residency was established by a woman leaving a toothbrush and a pair of underwear behind at her boyfriend's house. She was escorted out of the house and arrested by the police. However, she took this to court. The judge in the case advised that since she had property at the boyfriend's place and had stayed over multiple nights over a 30-day time period, the woman had established residency. She was allowed to move in with him and he had, no, he had to legally evict her. I think I'm going to state the obvious that everybody else is thinking. That is fucking crazy. She leaves her goddamn toothbrush behind her and her fucking sexy ass panties. And then she's been coming over to fuck you a few many times during the month. And guess what? You get fucked. Yeah. I'd like to know what state this happened in. This is a form of case law. And there are several case laws that con con counteract this. However, due to it being established, attorneys still use as an example to screw guys over on residency. This is something you've talked about with the gals leaving their items behind in order to mark their territory and gives them a reason to contact you and come back. There's a chance it can be more sinister than that, so here's what needs to be done. Okay, pay attention. First, get rid of whatever items she left behind immediately. Whether it's one thing or a few things, get them back to her no matter what the circumstances. Do not leave them inside you place on or on, on your property. Drop them off at her house and explain to her that you don't want her stuff at your place. If she gets angry at this, begs, pleads, or cries, especially trying to give some explanation as to why she did this, run for the fucking hills. You'll be dodging a bullet. If she apologizes, agree not to do it, and does not do it, you may have a good one. Time will tell. There you go. I have enclosed a list of states with specific residency requirements for when guests become tenants. It's fairly surprising. I suggest all the guys look into this before having any chick come over to your place. So this list he attached to the email. And what I'm going to do is so you guys can benefit from this list and check your state for these things, I'm going to put it on my Instagram. So guys, go to the description, click my Instagram, and you can click on it and you can see the list and scroll through the different pictures to find your state. And see what it's talking about here. I'm not going to put it on the YouTube community page because I kid you not, I can see YouTube finding an excuse to cause trouble for me. I don't need that bullshit. Instagram gets mad at me. I don't give a shit. But I'll put it up there before I publish this video and you guys can check that out. Anyway, as a side note, if you've been seeing a girl for a while, check her driver's license or state ID from time to time. See if she changed her address to yours in an attempt to establish residency. If an incident happens, the police are called, and you want to get her out, it may not happen if her ID says she lives at your place. God damn, that's something I never thought of. That's nuts. But again, this is coming from a cop. He's obviously seen something like this. As I said before, officers cannot make someone leave their own home. If her ID says she lives there, most likely she will be allowed to stay. This is why you get rid of all her stuff, and if she gets mail at your place, contact the Postal Service and have that mail stop immediately. If this is the case, and you have taken the proper steps, not having any of her stuff there, etc., you can still have her removed. However, it never gets to this point, but I've seen crazier stuff before. Okay, and I might add, for my 4% of girls that watch me here, uh, you got a situation with a guy like that, you now know how to handle it. Or any... Buddy that you let stay at your house because you're trying to help them out and they're going through a hard time. And next thing you know, they won't leave. Let's, so this can be applied to anyone. Uh, one thing you're right about is when you mentioned fighting with a big dude versus fighting with a woman. I would definitely rather fight a big guy who knows martial arts. If for no other reason, it's easier to de-escalate a guy like that because they have, tend to respond to logic and reasoning. Being high on certain drugs would be the exception. Women, on the other hand, tend to respond to emotions, and when their emotions are up, they're extremely vicious in a fight and will not stop unless you take serious action. Yeah, I was told that in martial arts. I was told in Krav Maga, you want to have the knowledge of a black belt, train your way there, but also react in a way that a, you know, a, a woman might in a situation. Being unpredictable... Again, this is a life and death situation, guys. Being unpredictable, screaming, biting, clawing, anything. 
like the analogy, like imagine holding a cat with sharp claws and somebody dumps cold, ice cold water on the cat. That cat, ah! yeah. Again, this is self-defense. I've been told that cops are out to deal with a trained martial artist and an unpredictable woman that could just all over the fucking place. Yep. Now listen to his story here. I had one incident where another officer was called for help during a traffic stop that went bad. One of the officers I was on shift with pulled a traffic stop on a car and the driver immediately started to fight with him. He called it on the radio that he was involved in a fight and I was the first one to arrive on the scene. When I arrived, I saw the officer wrestling with the driver, a male, and I saw a female jump on his back. I ran up to the officer, pulled her off, and slammed her to the ground. So that's a situation I guarantee you that that's caught on camera. They see a cop removing a very violent gal off a guy and, as he says, slammed on the ground. You can see how that would be taken out of context by CNN or something like that. I was about to put her in handcuffs when a second female exited the vehicle, jumped on my back, and began digging her long nails into my back and shoulders. Okay, so she thinks she's Lady Deathstrike from fucking X-Men. She was also screaming like a banshee into my ears while continuing to dig her nails in. We were out of vest carriers and she was able to get her hand under my vest to dig her nails in. Her hand got stuck under my vest and she kept digging in. I got the first female handcuffed, left her on the ground, and I was able to wrestle the second one off me. I was able to get her into handcuffs as well before the other officers arrived on the scene to assist. The other officers helped the initial officer handcuff the male, and he gave up being tased. The females continued to scream and fight. One of them ended up kicking another officer in the balls while he was trying to put her inside the patrol vehicle. What I tell you about the unpredictable biting, kicking, screaming, scratching, eye gouging, you get the point. When we got back to the station, uh, we ended up putting all three in separate cells. The women were screaming and yelling for about 10 to 15 minutes before calming down. And after that, they were on again, off again, crying for the rest of the night. The guy ended up being a little apologetic afterwards and was calm the entire time he was in the lockup. When we asked why they decided to fight, the guy said he had a suspended license and did not want to lose his car again. Okay, so you're driving a suspended license. You don't want to lose the car again. So you get pulled over, you're busted, and you're going to actually get physical with the cop, now giving yourself a way bigger problem than uh, just simply, you, you get the point? Fucking idiots. And then the gals get involved, jumping. Well, they're probably his hose, you know, but still. The two females advised they were not going to let their ride home go to jail. The worst part of the whole incident was when I found out how bad I was bleeding afterwards. I took out my vest to the, in, the state, in the station because I thought I was covered in sweat. It was in the middle of July, after all. And my sergeant saw my back, and he ended up calling an ambulance for me. As it turns out, I had several good-sized cuts on my back that were bleeding pretty bad. The back of my shirt and the back of my vest were covered in blood. I don't know why I didn't feel pain for a while. Adrenaline is one hell of a drug. The medics came, bandaged me up, and we ended up charging all three with aggravated battery to a peace officer. All felonies. Ha ha ha. Luckily, I did not need stitches, and I still have some of the scars to this day. When they went to court, only the female that jumped on me had her charges upheld. The first female and the male had their charges dropped down to misdemeanor battery charges because the other two officers were not examined and determined to be injured by paramedics. The female that attacked me was busted down to mis misdemeanor at her trial because she had no prior felonies. Of course... It just goes to show that men may cause greater damage in some scenes. However, women can be more vicious and wild than any man. Good tale of caution to keep things in perspective. Yes, so there you go, guys. This backs up exactly what I was told years ago in martial arts. I also wanted to add to the original list I sent in. There, there are some other things I thought that might help here, based on my experience and some of the other officers' experiences that I spoke with regarding domestic issues. Okay, we're continuing on to number nine, because the part one had eight things. Number nine, always have a witness. When it comes to domestic issues and accusations, friends and family can turn on you just like that. Especially if no one knows what is going on between the two of you. A lot of the time, as we've all seen, the gal will be believed and you'll be hung out to dry by everyone who's ever cared about you. 
This is where you can control the narrative because it starts to become a problem. Confide in a close family member that you trust or a very close friend that you trust. There he goes again. Control the narrative. Uh, go to them and tell them that your wife or girlfriend is acting erratic, crazy, uh, hurting you, cheating, proposing open marriages, etc. Tell them how you've been feeling and how hurt you are by the whole situation. But just don't cry in front of them. Keep that to yourself. This does not make you a bitch or weak or anything like that. It's a small play that will get that will help get people on your side before the situation goes to the extreme. Plus, two heads in a bad situation are always better than one. There's a chance that they may not want to get involved anyway. However, at the very least, there's a there's very little chance you'll lose their trust if you ever get accused of any of these situations. How many stories have I done, guys, where guys are just shocked that friends they've had forever, mutual friends they've had, with, with the girlfriend or the wife, all of a sudden have turned on them because of what she said. Now that says a lot about these people, but still. A good way to keep things in your favor is to keep the trusted person informed every step of the way. Let them know every time an incident occurs and have a plan on what to do if things get bad. If possible, have a trusted person move in with you to keep her in check. Well, good luck with that one. If she ends up calling the cops, that trusted that trusted person can be a second witness in your favor. It's very hard for police officers to ignore two people giving the same story versus one person whose story is, who is erratic and keeps changing theirs in order to get the other others locked up. Yeah, well, what if you have a female officer on the scene or two female cops and you have the two guys saying something and you got the crying girl there and, and we have repeated what you told me in the other video. But we hope that doesn't happen. Officers tend to document when witnesses are involved in any case, especially domestics. They will also be hesitant to put you in handcuffs if you have someone else contradicting the future ex's story and providing evidence that you did nothing wrong. Your friend slash family member can also give prior history between you and your future ex due to you going to them before the cops have ever showed up at your place. All this info will be documented in the police report, and when you get a copy of said report, give copies to your attorney and other friends and family members. Your friend or family member can also testify on your behalf in court. Refer back to Scenario 7 for any further information. Okay. Works for me. Uh, number 10. Do not breach any restraining order against you. Should be common sense, but we'll, sit, we'll, we'll go through this anyway. In some states, restraining orders or orders of protection can be obtained in emergency circumstances. And I say emergency because there are people out there that abuse the system and will have them falsely filed. In my state, if an order of protection is filed, it cannot be executed, cause for arrest, if the respondent does not know that it has been filed against them. Okay, makes sense to me. This means they cannot be arrested immediately. However, the officer or the sheriff's department will have to issue a copy of the order. Uh, after that, the order of protection is in effect and to the respondent can be subject to arrest if he or she breaches it. To the guys that have had this done to them and were blindsided by it, make sure you read over the order thoroughly and give a copy to your lawyer. Find out where you can go and where you cannot go. Make sure you stay away from certain areas where you know your soon-to-be ex will be, be at. And make every attempt to avoid her, her friends, and her family as much as possible. It shows that you're, you're uh, not making any attempt to break the court order and that you're emotionally stable, not looking for revenge. In other words, if you normally go to the same supermarket, go to a different fucking supermarket. If you go to the same gym, even though you don't want to change your gym, go to a different fucking gym. It's not worth it in the long run. The exception to the rule is if, if uh, you both have kids, children in common, an agreement can be made through the courts to make arrangements for pickups and drop-offs with the kids. One other exception of the order of protection is that if she breaks the order, it cannot be used against you. Women will play this game where they will show up where you are with an order of protection in place and try to get you to leave. It's a power play to mess with you and scare you. If you were at a bar, party, or friend's house before her, she shows up and threatens to call the cops, tell her to go ahead. When the cops arrive, explain that you were there first and she is trying to use the police as a weapon against you. Officers... Officers will have access to the OOP and the info on it. However, you will have witnesses on your side that will explain that you are in a right and your ex is in the wrong, and they will make her leave for breaching her own order. If you're the one that is told to leave, simply follow orders and just leave. Be as polite as possible if dealing with officer douchebag. Yeah, I was going to say, what if he says that anyway? He says, I was here first, and the officer doesn't give a shit. 
Uh, make sure you record the situation and at the very least give the information to your attorney. Also send the recording to trusted friends and family so they know what is going on. It will also reflect in the officer's report specifically that you comply without any issues. Refer to scenario 6 and 9 for further info. Uh, lastly, I do want to emphasize that officers that show up to your place are definitely not your enemy. However, they are not your friend either. You heard this, guys. Uh, this was stated quite a few times in the comments section, and it is correct. The officers responding to a call at your house, in their mind, are going to a very dangerous call where they don't know you, your soon-to-be ex, the layout of your house, and where the weapons are in the house. This is a fair point he's making, guys. They also have half the info, at best, when on their way to the call because dispatch usually only gets one side of the story. Right. They'll be highly on guard going into this situation. They're investigating a situation where it can go bad in less than a second. A good way to avoid this is go to your local police department and let them know you're going through a divorce. Or you need information on how to get your ex out of your place. This is a twofold accomplishment. First, it lets the cops know that an incident may happen at your place and that you are the affected party. If the police get a call at your place from your ex, they'll already have an idea that she may be trying to have you locked up as a power play or for revenge. I have never heard this before, but this is brilliant advice. I heard this in a video I did yesterday from a guy who's 66 years old. Maybe you guys saw this. And I can't on the spot think of the name of the video, but I published it yesterday. And he mentioned this because this guy went through hell through fucking divorce and so did his friends. And he said, let the local cops know. You're going through a divorce, may get ugly. Well, here we have a cop saying the same goddamn thing. Uh, this also helps when you get to know some of the officers in the area. When they show up, they already know your name and personality. It puts you in a good light in their eyes and it shows you're trying to do the right thing the right way. This goes into the second part and they'll get to know you. They will get a sense of your personality, uh, how you are and how you act, your mannerisms, etc. This way, if something happens at your place, they will not immediately look at you as the bad guy. They will think twice when they get the info. If the call comes in that you were the aggressor, all this will reflect when the officer writes the report, and you can use it in your favor during the divorce slash separation process. I uh, like the first email. I hope this information helps. Sir, this will most certainly help a lot of guys. I've learned a lot of things through your through your emails here, so I really appreciate this. To the guys in the comments who've been screwed by their ex and further by the police, that is why I wrote this in. With the knowledge and experience that I have, I want to give you guys info that will give you a fighting chance. If you found yourselves in these types of situations, I'm sorry you had to go through all that, this shit without any help. It feels like no one's on your side and that no matter what you do, there is no hope. I know how it feels when everyone turns their backs on you because of a lie and losing hope that it will get better. Uh, there are much better alternatives than using the universal mute button on yourself. Remember, you're not alone, and there is a large community out there that will have your back. This community has your back, and we will be there for you. Hey, fucking men. When I started this channel almost five years ago, I never thought that things would turn out the way they did. I was just having fun on my fucking couch. For those, those of you guys that saw the videos on my couch when I'd had the sunglasses on, I was just doing this for the goddamn hell of it, you know? Reading some articles and sharing my opinion on things that annoy the shit out of me and well here we are and thank you all but this has become a great community and you guys i i can see you guys have conversations with each other with each other in the comment sections and recognize each other and help each other out it's awesome to the cop haters out there and the smart asses in the comment sections i have one thing to say to you bring the internet tough guy into a situation like this especially towards the cops and you're going to have a very bad time there's an old saying, a play stupid games, win stupid prizes. However, as I recall, you can't fix stupid. It sucks that guys have to go through all this just to prove that they may be in innocent of the accusation made by a vengeful gal, but that's the sad reality of the world we live in. Yes, it is. I hope you guys are never involved in any situations like this. However, if you do find yourself in the worst case scenario, I hope you can use this playbook to your advantage. Correct. And, and also, hopefully, you get yourself a darn good attorney and you listen to your attorney. Again, SSM, thank you for all that you do. I recently showed my dad and my two brothers your videos along with my nephew. My dad is a retired police lieutenant and my brothers are police officers as well. Holy shit, your whole family is a bunch of cops? Wow. It's like that show uh, Blue, Blue, Blue Bloods. So I guess your dad's Tom Selleck. So are you, uh, are you what the hell is their names? 
one of the Wahlberg brothers, who's the hard ass in the show, or I think his name is Will Estes, is a good cop, but he's definitely a little more easygoing. Or maybe you're like a... In Police Academy, Tackleberry, remember that crazy guy who's obsessed with guns? Mary is the, the police officer chick, and then the brother becomes a cop, and, and they're all, and the, and the cop and his dad are always, they're boxers, and they're always beating the shit out of each other. Maybe, are you the Tackleberry family? Anyway, my dad thinks you're funny, and, and from some of the stuff he's watched, he says he can't disagree with you a lot. Both my brother said you're hilarious and, ten, and told me to send in the story. Both said they want to see me get smacked as much as possible, and we will have to make a drinking game out of it. Well, you didn't say anything that would make me smack you. Uh, as for my nephew, he went through a bad breakup with his now ex fiance I turned him in onto your channel, and he likes your content. He's currently in the military, and he almost married a military gal. Smacked your nephew. Well, he got, well, I'm sorry what happened to him, and it didn't go well, but then again... I guess he dodged a big one here. Don't get married when you're in the military. Don't get involved with military chicks. Wait till you're out. Uh, I sent him one of your videos on the military wise, and he said he watched them all. Afterwards, he responded with, well, dodged a bullet. Yes, he did. Young nephew, you're going to be okay. Take your time. Hang out with your bros. Hit the gym. I'm, I'm sure if you're a young military guy, you got to keep your ass in shape. Take it day by day. You're going to be all right. As always, feel free to reach out for any questions. I'll answer them as best I can. Thank you. And as always, God bless my good sir. God bless you for sending this info. And in. I really appreciate it. It's very good. I learned a lot here. So I really, I love all the, the things I cover. I love all the crazy stories I cover, but I also like to learn shit too. So this was very informative. I've walked away from this series of emails smarter, as I hope a lot of you guys have. So there you go. Wish you luck, sir. You got your hands full with two five-year-olds and, and a newborn here. And uh, I wish you all the best. And uh, send me down the road. If you want to send some war stories in or anything, any updates or anything, just let me know. Or to the nephew. You want to write in about your situation with your military wife? Or, I mean, your, your ex-military fiancé? Let's hear your story. We want to hear it. Remember, guys, the more stories are sent in, the more guys we can help with. As well as your police officer brothers and father. I'm sure they got war stories. I'm sure they got something to share. And maybe I'll smack them too. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.